Revelation, when nothing else will do. Tune into A Godly Woman's View with Anita C. Spaulding and her anointed panel of godly women who will minister, inspire, and set your soul on fire. Woo! Yeah! Watch and listen every Tuesday night from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on blogtalkradio.com slash a godly woman's view and also on livestream.com slash a godly woman's view. Thank you so much. We appreciate it more than you know. A Godly Woman's View with... Anita C. Spaulding. Good evening, and God bless each and every one of you that's tuned in to listen to a Godly Woman's View um, talk show. And we're excited on this evening because um, we know that uh, good things are happening. God bless you. Um, I see you overseer Linda Stymex, my God sister. Good evening to you. We're waiting for our guest to come on in and um, she was having some technical difficulties um, with coming in, but we're gonna go go on anyway, but I'm glad to see all of y'all. You, you know, I get excited anyway when um, any program comes on because I get to um, have a dialogue with each and every one of you. So, you know, um, we're not stopping. We gotta keep on moving, we keep on going. And I'm, ex- I'm excited because this Tuesday is a Tuesday that I never saw. And I'm grateful that I see this Tuesday. And you should be grateful, too, that you were able to see this particular Tuesday. Because it's not going to come around again, but it will come as a Tuesday. But it's going to be a different date. Oh, bless God. But those of you that are um, listening, this is a Godly Woman's View talk show. And we've been running for about... I guess 12, 13 years, and we've been on screen. Thank you so much. So do you. You look beautiful from where you are, too. <laughs> I, I wish I could get you on here because I guess, a matter of fact, I'm just going to send you the link, all right? Y'all just hold on for one minute while I send this link to uh, my uh, my sister here to see if I could do it because, um, you know, you got to get good at this stuff. Uh, where is she? Linda Stymex. Okay. And all you do is click it on. Uh, we are still talking. Oh, it's not happening either for me. Okay. I don't know why it's not doing it. But anyway, um, we're going to go right back here where we are. And um, God, good evening. God bless you. How are you, Mother Hayes? Looks like I got all the girls. They're coming on um, to see what's going on and to hear what's going on. I guess is having some difficulty coming in. But what we want to talk about um, is I, I want to just introduce a couple of things. Uh, listen, we have a couple announcements on this Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm the guest speaker for the fifth annual Sister to Sister Virtual Empowerment Gathering um, via Zoom. So the Zoom meeting ID is on the screen. Also the pass um, code, we have our um, evangelist, Melissa Sands, who's the gathering host. And also for the psalmist is evangelist Anissa uh, Stewart. So I'm looking for a high time in the Lord. The Lord has already um, put within my spirit um, what uh, to speak on and what to give the women. And, you know, because whatever he has to say, I'm in agreement with it. Listen, and on the 19th of May, I will be a guest speaker at the Holy Convocation one night. Um, holiness uh, it's, it's dealing with holiness. I'm the guest pastor, Anita Spaulding and Elder Phelps. Now this will be in person at 307 16th Avenue in Newark, New Jersey, where the pastor is Bishop uh, Clifton Williams. So it will be at eight o'clock PM. So those of you that's in the area, um, we want you to, I wanna see you in the house, but also pray for me if you cannot come, um, because I know that there is a word that God has in my belly for each and every one of these services. Now, when I go to do a service, I don't duplicate messages, but I ask the Lord, what is it that you would have me to say for these particular 
um, people and individuals. And he always has a word in my belly. Good evening. I see you, um, Valerie Rich. Uh, good evening to you. True Vision, I see you. Um, she's representing First Lady Sunshine Harden. She's unable to come in, but um, perhaps maybe you could give her a call and help her to come in um, on her phone. She's using her phone to come in. So we are, we're waiting for her, but we're going to keep on going. I see my um, bishop elect Richard Spaulding. He says, great evening to the awesome host, Anita C. Spaulding and her guests. This is going to be a great program. Well, you girls and um, you guys are going to help me with this program on tonight because the guest is still trying to get on. Um, she says she's trying to get on, but the phone is acting up. So we're going to we're going to reschedule her if we have to. But I'm certainly glad to see each and every one of you on tonight. My name is Pastor Anita Spaulding, and I'm the host of A Godly Woman's View. And we have been in existence for at least uh, 12, 13 years. And our mission is to motivate, to activate, to stimulate um, the masses and classes of people or women throughout the country, because there are those that need to be motivated. And if we can motivate them um, as women, you know, and sometimes women have a tendency of being jealous of one another. They don't like a person because they just don't even have a reason. You ever been around somebody? They just don't have a, a reason why they don't like somebody. Well, um, there's a lot of people like that, but we're not like that. I see my goddaughter, LeVette. Um, great evening to you. So what we're going to talk about tonight is goal setting, goal setting. And I need each and every one of you to help me um, talk about goals on tonight. Now, I want to ask this question and perhaps you can um, just type it on the screen. Um, how important are goals to you? Now, we need to set goals. We need to set goals. Goals are very important. If you don't set a goal, you don't know which direction that you're going to go in. But we need to set goals. If you have to take and write it down, uh, perhaps um, you, you could journal it. Um, this is my goal. Or you could have daily goals where you have, we call it an agenda when I was um, a secretary or executive secretary, but we had, you had an agenda um, for the, um, um, your manager and you told them what the agenda was, what the goals were for that day. Now, do you set goals yourself? Good evening. I see you, Clarissa Jordan. I just see all of you that are coming in is so special. Um, True Vision is here. True Vision um, Worship Church is here, but their first lady is not able to get on again. But we're talking about goal setting. How important is a goal to you? Do you set goals? God bless you. How are you? Good evening to you, Brooklyn Ball. I'm glad to see all of you tonight. So how important, again, is, is goals to you? I see you, Tori, um, Howard. I'm telling you, this is just awesome. Y'all, you guys are awesome. Well, goals are very important to me. If you don't set a goal, you don't know which way you're going. When you, the Bible even says this, that um, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Without a vision, the people will perish. Even your own household. If you don't have a vision for your household and how the house is going to be run, because goals tell you, listen, this is how a thing is going to be run. This is how we're going to do it. So we need to set goals in order for us to know which way we're going, then how are we going to get there and how are we going to accomplish what we're doing? And Linda Steinmix, you guys are all my guests tonight, all right? So you could just answer in um, text form. But <clears throat> uh, Linda Steinmix says goals are very important. They set forth your plans. Listen, for your plans for future accomplishments, if, fa if you fail to plan, then you, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And that is, that is so true and apropos for so many because they just all, you ever seen people just haphazardly all over the place, don't know which direction to go. Oh my goodness, I see my guests is in the backstage. But when you're setting goals, you have to um, make sure that 
um, uh, you set it for future accomplishments, but not only for future accomplishments, you have to set them for um, uh, your, your daily accomplishments. I see you, Brooklyn Ball. God bless you. How are you? She says, to accomplish a goal, we have to have a plan. And this, I'm telling you girls are really helping me. Yes, a leaf like in a wind when you don't have any goal, when you don't have any direction. I'm going to bring our guests in. All right. Is that all right? Somebody give me a drum roll. Somebody give me a drum roll. We're talking about um, having goals or setting goals. All right. Here she is. Hi, how are you? Praise the Lord. I apologize, everybody. My 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 iPhone is I don't know but anyway I'm here praise the Lord thank you that's all right you're here that's thank the you. most important I thing I and we here. make the devil out of a liar listen Amen. everyone I'd like to just to introduce you to Sandra J Harden who is AK um a sunshine all right sunshine J Harden she's the first lady and she's a true example of the Proverbs 31 woman. This woman tried, she's been trying for the last um, um, few minutes trying to get on and yes, we're so excited about you. Listen, we've changed a little bit the direction of the show, but we're going to still talk about in the midst of, oh, that's but fine. we're talking about goal setting and yes. how to set goals and how important. And these ladies um, that are on tonight, they're helping us with the conversation. Oh, I Amen. see it. <laughs> Valerie Rich says, true vision is in the house. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> true vision is in the house. You, Hallelujah. You, and um, uh, Overseer Stomach says, so glad you made it. They were waiting for you. They were sitting yes, here waiting. They was listening to me, but they was like, we want this I lady. Said, Who is this lady? First the of all, devil has no authority. Not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I love it. That, and that's what we have tenacity and we have strength. And that's one thing about goals um, is that you have to push, wouldn't you say, in many areas. Talk about goals a little bit. I know it's like off the top, but OK. Talk about goals a little bit. Uh, um, I, I, would, I would say goals to have a you, you have to have a push. Um, in order, in order to want something, you have to have that that determination. You have to have to have that that boundary set that in your mind that you're saying, you know, I can do this. I, I, I yeah. nothing's going to stop me um, from. And like like tonight, I was like, nothing is going to stop me from doing what <laughs> thus says the Lord. And I was nothing like, I can't even help you. Tonight. I'm going to get through here. So I was determined. So in order for us to have goals, we have to be determined. Wow. To get to where God wants us to be, um, without termination, we don't have anything. So I tell the ladies on tonight, before we even get started with, with with my book, if you are determined and you have a mindset to do what God has called you to do, business, um, uh, uh, uh whatever He called you, book, bakery just anything that's entrepreneur, you put your mind to it and you can do it. And I tell you tonight, you can do it. You can do it with you, the grace of God. You and can you know, do anything. Um, First Lady, um, many are discouraged even in this day and time um, yes. because of the pandemic, yes, but also because sometimes people don't have that stamina. I said you yes. need to have stamina, stamina, Amen. grits, guts and god so amen it's guts and god amen. to accomplish anything and i see um Steinmeck, she says there has to be determination determination and you need to be determined to do something like you said that i wasn't gonna let anything stop me. you ever had i don't know if any of you had a dog but i had a little puppy at one time you know like, uh -huh. i'm 66 so that was a hundred years ago, but anyway, <laughs> I had a little dog and a puppy and trying to train that little puppy. And I would take his nose and put it in the area where he did his thing. And yeah. he would steady go, but not pay attention and go back over in another corner and do what he wanted to do. He was determined to do what he wanted, but I was determined he was yeah. going to do what yeah. I wanted to do. So we can kind of, I guess you could say, you could kind of direct um, your yes. goal setting. Goal. If you set it, yeah, you can kind of set them. Now, listen, I have this. I see so many people are answering this question. This is <laughs> awesome. Um, Tara T. Wilson says, Black women uh, made more money during the pandemic. Ooh. Oh, my. Mm. Okay. 
Um, All right. Oprah Winfrey said, there's nothing you can't have if you have the courage to ask for that. It's awesome. Rich, Valerie Rich says, oh, I like your name already. You're already there. You're rich. <laughs> um, we have to succeed. Yeah. And then also we have to have the right mindset. Oh, Amen. my goodness. I see you, Mother Hayes. She says, yes, goals require determination. <laughs> and one yes. thing about it, I'm telling you, these people are just answering. I have one more and then you can answer, okay? Oh, you can go uh, ahead. Pamela Wiggins Highsmith says, the devil was given. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can't with y'all tonight. Y'all are just too much. <laughs> the devil was given an eviction notice when you logged on. <laughs> You said you said not not in this plan. You ain't in this plan. <laughs> and you know, I thank God for you and how um you are determined, and we have to be determined to go all the way. Now, I just want to yes. read her bio. Is that all right with y'all? But first of all, let's just give you a proper um let you give a proper hello to those that are watching. Um, good just evening, hello good to evening, our, um, good evening yeah. everyone that's watching on, on Facebook Live um, on this broadcast today. Um, I am none other than Sandra Harden. I am so excited to be here. I I, I, I thank um, the Apostle for, for allowing me to come on tonight to be a part of her show. Um, I'm just honored to be here on tonight. Thank you again. And, and we're thankful that you just were determined to get on. And I see so many that are um, coming on. I see overseer Alexis J. Williams. She said, God bless you, Pastor Anita C. Spaulding and Bishop Elect Spaulding. And he's in yes. another meeting, but I thank God for him. Also, I see Shirley Hughes. She says, good evening. And I like, to have, I like to have that dialogue with um, the viewers all the time because it, it would not be a show if I did not have the VIPs watching. Man. They're the very important people. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes us go where we need to go. So anyway, let me um just read this um bio to you about this beautiful um woman of God. Sandra J. Harden is the first lady, and she's a true example of the Proverbs 31 woman. She's a faithful servant to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. She is a down-to-earth and jovial and balanced woman of God. This is awesome when we're talking about goals too. Yes. Um, her heart speaks for itself. Lifting up the name of Jesus through song is her passion. And she's always willing to lend a helping hand. She loves teaching the word of God. She was born in Richmond, Virginia and the oldest of two children, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and she of a grandmother of three. She's a child of God striving to live the way the Lord would have her to live. She is a national recording artist of a single entitled All Right, Amen. released in 2019. She's also the new author of a book entitled In the Midst of It All. And that's what we're going to be talking about. And we're bringing in tying it in with the goals. You know, it's something how we could just we could just change a program and just bring things in. That's <laughs> We clever girls. We, we, we got a very mind here. But anyway, um, it was released April 2020 by the Prize Publishing Company. Set free and willing to and able to share with others the knowledge and wisdom. She's the wife of Pastor James Harden of True Vision Worship Ministries. And I met him online about uh, about six weeks ago and he came on New Normal. I'm telling you, God is just connected. And I think connectivity is very good in whatever you're doing, too. And they're in Whitestone, Virginia. She is the founder of S. Period GH Ministries, uh, a women's empowerment ministry teaching about the trials of domestic violence. It's OK to be silent. This spiritual platform teaches young ladies and women that no matter what anyone speaks over their life or what they have been through, you can overcome with the help of God's favor, according to the scripture, Philippians 4 and 13. I can, why well, don't y'all just say, can you do it? I can do all stuff on the shoulder, y'all that's watching and say, I can do all things. I can. 
And here we present to those on tonight, this beautiful woman of God, our um, first lady, uh, Sandra Hardin, who is also Nate called Sunshine. Say hello to them again. Amen. Good evening once again. I'm so glad to be here. I am Sandra Sunshine Harden, um, First Lady of True Vision Worship Ministries in Whitestone, Virginia. And I'm glad to be here on tonight to just talk about a little bit about my book um, on tonight. So I thank you. Okay. All right. Well, let me just ask you this question. Um, wow. This is this is also just so awesome. Now, let me ask you a question. What made you want to even um, become an author? Because once you write, you become an author. Just take your time. You don't have to tell us about the whole book because we want them to buy it, okay? All right. So, so just tell us a little bit. Well, how did you start? Well, really and truly, I wasn't planning to be an author. <laughs> um, truthfully, what happened is when life struggles was happening, and I would put my feelings on paper. I would go down to the water and I would just, just write papers and papers stacked up to be a lot of papers in a tablet. Wow. And I put the papers aside for years and I never touched the papers again until I met Pastor Harden. Wow. So and how long have you been married, you and uh, Pastor? The, it'll, be two, it'll be two years in December. Oh, you are newlyweds. We are. Oh, we are. Okay. And, and it's when I when I met him and I started to talk to him about, before we um, got married, I started to talk to him about my life. Okay. Because I wanted him to, I wanted him to know exactly who I was. Well, can you share a little bit about it? Because when you're talking about in the midst of it, we want to know what you actually were in the midst of, okay. you know. Okay. Um, let me, let me, let me just, um, like I said, we, we're, we're real. I only, I, I'll tell people when I speak, I speak the truth. Okay. Because I want to help somebody. Yes. That's what it's all about. And it's all about helping. It's all about us helping, helping one of the women, helping each other in, in struggles. Um, I went through a period of my life, um, as I was growing up, um, without a father figure. I knew who my father was, but he didn't raise me. My mother raised me as a single parent. And we, as women, sometimes we look for love in all the wrong places. We look oh, for that, that, we look for that, that, that person to, to tell us that we're beautiful, we look for that person to tell us that, you know, um, that they love us. And we find relationships and we find ourselves in relationship that, that God didn't send us, we pick on ourselves. Um, so at the time, after I graduated from high school and um, I met a guy and we got married, uh, I loved him. He loved me. That's what he that's what he said. And years passed and just, just trying to go through it. Years passed and um, I was told that he was cheating with the next door neighbor. Oh, Lord. So that destroyed that put you in the midst that of put me in the midst of wanting to do something that I knew that was not godly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It put me in the midst of wanting to take my life. Wow. Um, I went through a period of uh, I'll just say this right here. I had family that that knew about it and they tried to tell me, but because of love. And thinking that you're in love, mm -hmm. you put up with a whole lot of stuff. Wow. And you so, know what? There, there are so many women that will just take, take it, take it. And you never, sometimes you never know what they're going through exactly. because, you know, they don't voice it. But I'm glad you're being transparent tonight. And those of you that's watching, we want you to help us build um, the talk show on tonight, the audience. Yeah by tagging, sharing, and inviting. You could just um, do the apresan and their name and invite them to be a part of this program on tonight because this is an awesome story because even though you might be in the midst of something, our um, first lady is telling you, you could be in the midst of it, but you can come out. Go ahead, um, first lady. 
Amen. So a long story short, um, after allowing the after allowing the enemy to come take control of my mind, mm. taking control of my heart, telling me that I would never amount to anything, telling me that I would never have anybody to love me. Um, look what they have done to you. Wow. Then on top of then on top of that, um, the ex the ex husband ex husband had a baby by another woman. Um, oh, Jesus. <laughs> so I so I had to go through looking at my husband ex husband with another woman and a baby on the way. So mm. I felt I felt the pain. Of the, the mockery, I felt the pain of people just, you know, talking about me and saying this and saying that. And I felt like, why why should I live? Why should mm. I live? Because I, I love this man so much. Why should I live? So I, I went on top of the I went on top of the bridge and I was driving and, and the enemy told me to take my wheel and turn it to the left and run over, wow, the, run Jesus. over the bridge. Lord have mercy. And I called, I got on the phone and I called a digging and a digging at, at my church. And I said, I need you to help me. Wow. They, they said, can you make it back? Can you make it back across the bridge? I said, I don't know if I can make it or not. So they came and got me. Long story short, um, we, after all of that, we, divor we divorced. Um, but I still had that hatred. I still mm. carried that pain. I still wanted something to happen to him. I still wanted something to happen to her. And I knew that if I did not turn my life over to God, you that don't know what you would have done. I would have been in jail. I knew oh, what wow. I was going to I knew I was going to have, have a prison jail. ministry. That's what I you was going to have. have. You're right. Oh, Jesus. But so, you know, so many women are, are going through right now with different situations. It might not be with a spouse, but it could be with the children, with their exactly. child or children, with their jobs. And you, some folks are right in the midst of the pain and the hurt, as you were saying, yes. and they want to get out. But thank God that the God led you to someone that was spiritual minded to, to come and get you. And you didn't really want to kill yourself because no. you, you said you wanted to and you wanted to, but you really was trying to say, somebody rescue me, help me. Somebody, please come get me for real. But I, but, but, I, but, but on the on the serious though, I, I on the serious, right. I, I did. Um, I went through a stage a stage of depression. Um, I took anxiety pills. Um, I drank. Mm. I drank because of the hurt. I I I did all kinds of crazy stuff. Right. And right. I and I just wanted to let this tonight. And how long were you married to him? Um, 15 years. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that is painful. Yeah, 15 years. And you have children? 15 years. You no, have no, children. Cho no children by, no children by, by him. But I'm okay. not at all, yeah. But I just, but then I, after, like I said, even though that happened, I still was not myself. Wow. I still, I still was out there doing everything. Like my grandmother said, except the child of God would do. Right, I right. Doing it because of hurt. And I wanted to get back at other people because I was hurt. Because I was hurt. I wanted to get back at other people. Um, and you know, hurt people me. hurt people. Yes, they you do. You know, but also heal people heal people. Yes. So, um, I, and I'm hearing you, I see, um, Pastor Kenneth Marsh, he says, greetings from gospel recording artist, Pastor Kenneth Marsh yeah, and great, favorite great of mine. Great music of mine. ministry and production of the Baltimore's. I've also met him. Um, yes. I, I, I like that Valerie Rich even says hurt people, hurt people. So yes, here you're do. hurting and you were trying to strike back, you know, but not all the time, you know, or you can really strike back as the person. Sometimes they're going on with their life. They're not even, as the exactly. folks say, they know what they ain't stutting you. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Like I said, and I, and I wasn't all the way saved. You know, okay. I, I was brought up in the church. Um, my grandmother kept me in church. You know, mm -hmm. I went to Sunday school, Bible study, um, church every Sunday, but I still was not saved. 
Right. You know, you can say you're saved, but you're not really saved. You can go, you can go through the motions, you know. But um, like I said, uh, after all of that happened in my life, um, that still, that still didn't stop me from hurting. Right. Right. You know. So what did I do? What did I do? Yeah. And I said, I, I, my, my husband, uh, look, everybody on live, my husband knows all about my, my life. So I'm right. not saying anything that he does not know when he met me. Um, so during that hurt, guess what? I, I, I was sinning. Wow. I, I was out there sinning. I was out there doing everything I could possibly do, you know, uh, and I ended, I ended up. And you wanted the pain to stop, you know, exactly. but sometimes we turn to artificial means to, to suppress the hurt to help us to get through the the, the 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 devastation, you know, but not all that what once that all that stuff wears off, you still gotta face it. Exactly. And so um after all of that pain and suffering that I went through, I said if if they did it to me, I'm gonna do it to somebody else. Oh wow. So that's what I did. I, I I I got involved with a married man and um that was the worst mistake that I ever could do in my life. Are y'all hearing this testimony? She's in the midst of all of this and she's tried other things to try to say, listen, I'm going, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get through this. And sometimes going through something might take you through something worse. Yes. You know, and, and I, that's what people don't realize that once you're saved and if you, in the backslidden condition, what happens is seven other spirits come. Um, jump so on. Yes, yes, ma'am. Things that, things that you would not even normally do. So you weren't yourself. Yeah, so I, I, I started to be involved with a married man um, and that destroyed my life. Wow. I thought that the first part was bad. The second part was even worse. Um, there I was destroying a family because of my um my hurt my pain and i wanted them to i wanted this other person to feel the same thing that i felt and she had no she had no no involvement in it you wow. know and i you know I, I was ridiculed i was talked about i was my name was slandered um and i just felt i felt absolutely terrible i was shame faced um, didn't want to come out. Just wanted just to just go in a corner and and lay there and just just bow my head down. But I but I but I, what I can say is this right here. I, I can say this in the midst of all of that. Wow. The the wife forgave me. Ooh, Jesus, she was good. And no, <laughs> one, no, she was good. <laughs> yeah, she did. She did. She she forgave me for all the wrong that I had done to her. Um, in in the marriage, and we're not we're not friends, but we're not friends. But I, when I do see her, we can actually hug um, and say hello to each other. So God came in the midst of of that situation, and wow. he, yeah. So like I said, I tell people, um, we I tell I tell women all the time, listen, listen to me, good. There's always something better for your life. Wow. And allow 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 God to come in and show you you. Mm. And once he, once he shows you who you are, you'll never ever want to go back to that lifestyle again. And you and know some people you. don't want to face what you're saying is good. Yeah. Um some people women don't want to face who they really are. They want to push it off onto somebody else. I see you, Cynthia Hewton, you're sharing, um, you shared the program and I see someone else, Brooklyn Ball, you shared the program. And those of you that's watching, this is some kind of story because if you're in the midst of anything, this is the story that will encourage you, lift you up, will help you out of whatever you're in. Um, coming from our first lady, Hardin, and she's um, telling us what's on her heart and what she's gone through, she's gone through depression and she tried everything. She wasn't trying Jesus at that particular time, but she was trying everything that was going to, she was trying to really get a release, Amen. you know, 
but with getting a release, you can get deeper involved in the situation or situations that you wouldn't normally do. And that's what it sounds like to me that she was Amen. in the midst of stuff that, you know, that she would not normally do, but she wanted to try to get out. She didn't know. But, you know, we got to learn to turn to God. Amen. Um, Amen. 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 And so, like I said, I, the list goes on and on and on. I could stay here all night and tell you about my story. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't have it all night. We got another 50, 30 minutes. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> so, but anyway, so, so anyway, so after that happened, listen, anybody but after that happened, let me get, get to this piece right here. Um, after I struggled and struggled and struggled, um, I, I ended up into a relationship where... Um, that's when the abuse came another wow. relationship and oh, jesus i i kept it a secret um my family they they say they they knew what i was going through um but i thought nobody knew at all and it was when i it was when i almost lost my life at the hands of a man Mm. Is when I so you were in a domestic violence situation, also a domestic violence situation. Oh, Jesus, um, that I kept a secret. I never told anybody because I was ashamed of me being in the church and 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 them being not saved. And I I, I felt as if you know who going who's going to believe me um, if I tell them that that person is doing something to me. Uh, so. I finally, after, like I said, after almost losing my life and not being able to catch my breath, that's when I, I knew it was that it was time, time to, for yeah. me to get myself together. Wow. Wow. It was, it was time. It was time for me to, to, to actually say, Sandy, you know, Either you have a young son, you know, he's growing up and he's not going to have a mother because you're going to be dead. Ooh, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. So it took me a long time to stop loving the guy that was was the, the abuser. Um, but I forgave him. I, I forgave him for all the wrong that he had done to me. I forgave him. And... Um, my life just started to come back to itself. Um, I went and I said, okay, Lord, I, I need you to rescue me. I need you to heal me. Ooh, I, Jesus, I, yes, I need, Lord. I need you now to cleanse me and make me whole so I can, so I can be the woman that God wants me to be. And Lord, in your time, oh, Lord Jesus, yes. In your time, and you send me what I so richly deserve. Wow! And you know, Valerie Rich says we as women take too much. Yes, we do by not wanting to let go and let God. Sometimes we want to try to take matters into our own hands and, um, so to speak, help God. And um, Brooklyn Ball says this is helping women to heal, but. We have a, a message to you um, or to all of us on A Godly Woman's View. Minister Mickey Nixon says, praise God, sister. We all need validation. Amen. But don't hurt yourself. Always seek godly counsel. Thank God for you and your testimony. And thank God for the Holy Spirit's guiding guidance. Stay strong. Reverend Dr. Maxine Nixon, pastor of Healing Hands Ministry in Valley Stream, New York. Thank you so much for that. And then we have Tori Howard that says, wow, what a testimony. I see how the enemy, uh, yeah, Lord. Amen. Uh, <laughs> brings other spirits around and in us when we weren't in the fullness of God. Y'all are saying a whole lot because this is so important for us to know when we, we leave God out of this, the equation, as um, uh, Tori Howard is saying that 
The enemy will bring other spirits. I mean, they will come in all shapes and forms. And you know what? That reminds me of the uh, um, the woman that had the five husbands. Yes. But she was seeking for love in all the wrong places. So she got the first man that she was looking for love. The second one, she was looking for money. The, the third one, she was looking for sex. You know, so it just breaks it down what she was looking for. It wasn't that you were looking for another man, but there were certain things that you wanted to let go of, didn't know how to do it. And you thought maybe if I'm in this relationship, I could find my way out. Um, Karen, um, uh, I see you. I don't know how to say your last name. The land, Desland, oh Lord, let me leave your, your name alone. It's a beautiful name. Um, what a testimony, she said, to help others. And that's one thing that you're doing tonight. You're helping somebody else. Go ahead, woman of God. Amen. I, and I just, like I said, I just want to just want to say that once I, and once I surrendered to God and once I went um, on my face, and started praying and fasting and telling God that I was sorry for everything that I had ever done in my life. And I needed him to renew my spirit. Hallelujah. And I asked him to come into my life and just show me, show me how to live right. Show me how to love right. Show me how, how to, to love yourself. Yeah, and that's the whole thing. We have to, women that are on a men too, but we have to love ourselves. Amen. Um, nobody can't love us like we can love ourselves. I see my God sister, um, Pastor Laura Jackson, who is watching. She says, God bless you, God sister. Um, we see others that are just praying. Tori Howard, God bless you also. You know, because this this is not easy for um, First Lady to talk about it, but she knows that in the midst of all of what she's gone through, there is a greater purpose. Amen. You know, there is, she has gained strength. She's Amen. gained guts, God, and, and gut, gut, no, grit. Got that right. <laughs> God, grit, no, grit, guts, and God. <laughs> Amen. And that's what she <laughs> She has gained through all of this, through all the pain. And I know some sometimes um, women, we 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 beat up ourselves. You know, when you think yeah. we beat up on ourselves so much until we look like we've been in a, a fight, you know, in a ring with uh, Mike Tyson or something. We, we, we beat our own selves up. Not that the other person isn't contributing to that. But what we have to do, and I see Valerie Rich, and that's what I want to say, um, that we got to love ourselves first. Amen. Wow. That's exactly right. You're exactly right. And like I said, I, I, I lost myself um, in, uh, in the midst of all of this. I, I didn't comb, I didn't want to comb my hair. I didn't want to dress oh, Lord, no more. No, no. I, 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 I got to comb my hair now, girl. I'm pushing my teeth. That <laughs> oh, my God. I lost, I lost myself. I mean, you know, I'm like, okay, so who's going to love me? You know, I know there was God, but, you know, I'm like, but I really wasn't, in, you know, doing I understand. what God wanted. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to just, just lose myself. Um, but I just wanted to say, because I know we don't have a lot of time. I just want to say that after all of that, um, and I, I, I met Pastor Harden. Um, <laughs> yes, a beautiful man. Praise the Lord. Um, after after pr- fasting and praying for a long time and um from out of nowhere, Pastor Harden showed up uh, mm. in my in my life. And That's where God had him there all the time. He was Amen. there all the time. I think that was Amen. a song. <laughs> Amen. So, but I but the thing about it is, is that when you're open and honest um, in a relationship, and you tell them exactly what you were, and it's up to them to receive the woman that you are. Wow. And he and I, I was open and honest with him, and he took me just as I was, mm. you know. Um, and like I said, when I met him, and I told him my story, and he was like, "You need to write a book." Oh wow! And okay. I said, he "Well, encouraging you." I said, "Well, I said I have some pages all scattered around at my house." And he said, "Go get them." So I went. 
I went to my house and I got gathered up all the pages. And he said, now look for a publisher. Wow. Okay. And we prayed about it and I looked for a publisher. And all of the pages that I have is now in this book called In the Midst of It All. In the Midst of It All by Sandra Harden. Um, That's beautiful. It's, it's and where can they get the book at? Where can they purchase your book? You can. I have copies here um, with me. Um, you can get them from Amazon. It's on. They're on um, Books a Million. They're on Walmart.com. Um, they're on um, all. It's about a, about three hundred and eighty thousand retailers. Um, mm -hmm. Anywhere you punch in and punch in my name, this book will come up. It's um, it's also in Spanish. It's in um, French. It's in all types of languages. So, like I said, if you, just grab a copy, y'all. Um, I pray that this book will help somebody. Um, I do want to um, read an insert. Read just, a... let, me just, let me just read um, just a little bit of something out of here real quick. Um, okay. Um, this little part here, chapter says, when the unexpected comes, and it just says that throughout our lives, unexpected things happen. Mm. Sometimes we are broken in spirit. When this happens, you have to be reminded that all things work out for your good. Mm. And even when you think you're okay, you are okay. Something sneaks in and turns your world upside down. When this happens, you tend to focus on the storm. How do you overcome and bounce back from a bad situation? Do you have faith in trusting God and lean and depend on him to see you through? You still have to keep your eye on Jesus and continue to pray for the situation. You have to meditate and keep believing. Sometimes you may get caught in your feelings. You may need strength to make it. But regardless of how you feel, regardless of how you feel, you still have to let God lead and guide you. Do not allow your mind to wander all over the place because God has given mm. you the power to overcome anything with prayer. Now, that's all you're going to get. Y'all go get my book. <laughs> she said, that's all y'all going to get. <laughs> I that's love all you're going to get. Go get listen, the book. Get the book. <laughs> listen, we're listening to um, um, First Lady Sandra Harden, who's also called Sunshine, and she's a beautiful beautiful um, woman who shared her story with us, you know, and I'm just thinking in the midst of things because, you know, sometimes you, not sometimes, you got to do something about whatever you're going through. Like I always had the problem, not, not always, but it, the last couple of years problem, the weight just came back on. I didn't even want to be in the midst of people. I still don't really want to do it now, but, you know, I says the Lord is helping me through this situation and through the pain and the hurt, because it's something that I did, you know, to my own self by eating. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like almost, it's the almost 90 days of 90 days that I've had no sugar, no sweets, and my my um my blood sugar. Now in the mornings it gets up, I, I get up and it's too low. It's going from like three, four hundred <laughs> down to 61, things like that. So um, I'm taking less medication and, you know, I'm starting to feel good about myself because I wasn't, didn't have, as a matter of fact, I'm just being transparent with y'all. I had one skirt and that one skirt, I would wear that with the different tops. And when I would go out, I didn't want to go to church Fine. because I'm saying, I don't want people to see me like this. I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I'm feeling, but I always have, a, you know, my companion He's always encouraging me, but I'm like, I'm still not going around there. You know, I'm still not going to do that. You know, so the thing is, the Lord has helped me a lot where now I could fit more than one skirt. <laughs> but I said, still, Lord, I'm not going around them. Mm -mm, no, I've got to be a certain size because folk wasn't used to me that size, this size, you know. But the Lord is helping me, and I know that he is helping me get through this just as he's helping many of you get through different um, situations. Oh, wow. I looked at Valerie Rich. She says, wow, me too. No sugar since J January 31st. No sweets, no nothing Amen. like that. Oh, my God. 
you know, yeah. it's like distasteful. But this is something, you know, and I'm hearing you say in the midst of what you're going through, you got to do something about it. But I've learned, as you said, give it to God, Amen. give it to him. And when you give it to him, guess what? He's going to take care of you. I see all these testimonies coming up here. Lord, Amen. Amen. you would be surprised what people are going through, you know? Oh, let's, let me put this. I claim that I will get back to it in Jesus' name. You see that? Sapphire Turner says, I need to stop the sugar too. It takes it takes um, uh, strength, but it's discipline. You know, I just started cutting out stuff. And I even found some sugar-free Heinz ketchup, sugar-free mm. barbecue sauce. So, <laughs> you know, these things in the midst of what you're going through, you got to make some changes and as... Mm -hmm. As you were saying, it's not easy. That's the only thing I like that. It's just not easy. And people, you know, and I know I'm a lovable person and people, you know, but I still, I was like, mm -mm. and still not there yet to be going around folk too much, you know, because I'm thinking they're being critical. They're going to say, mm, my God, what happened to her? Jesus. I remember when, you know, how you got to remember when folks. <laughs> so in the midst of all that you've been going through, um, you sound like you set some goals for yourself. And that's what we were talking about um, earlier. But I want you to, um, oh, dear, my God, time is flying. Girl, we having a good time. <laughs> I want you to look into the screen and I want you to tell the women that are listening what is on your heart. I just want to say to um, the women on tonight that when everything is going wrong and it's Tempting to throw in the towel. Don't get angry. Don't give up. Don't stress yourself out. Continue to bend down on your knees and give God every problem, every situation that you have. And believe in and trust in him that he's going to give you the desires of your heart. And if you think is and if you think that is 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 too hard. There's nothing too hard for God. If he did it for me, I know he can do it for you. Wow. You know, and I have someone that's saying, um, Tori Howard says, change is necessary, Amen. even in the midst of it's all. Of, of yes, it all. Lord. Yes, nothing. Lord. You know, and, and you've encouraged us so much on tonight. Um, uh, Brooklyn Ball says, keep praying, keep trusting God. Um, someone put it up. The book is entitled In the Midst of It All. All right. And you can get the book at Amazon. And um, you can contact you can contact me um, on Facebook on the Sunshine Hardy and I can mail you a copy. Um, and I can give you the price and I can mail it to you. Wow, this is so awesome. And um, even Brooklyn Ball, she says, being obedient is so important to, to listen to God. You know, there is a scripture that says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So we got to be willing and yes, obedient. Yeah. There's some that's willing, but they ain't obedient. Then there's some that's obedient, right. but they ain't really willing and really want to do it. But Amen. the thing is, we have to be willing and obedient to eat the good of land. And I'm telling you, this has been an awesome interview with this beautiful woman who is now an author. But I want you to tell us a little bit because you have a single out. National, your national recording artist of a single called All Right. Okay, talk to us a little bit about that because you and your um, husband both sing. Yeah, uh, well, I had the, the single, the single the All Right is what I did that on my own um, back in uh, 2020. In, 2020 um it's i got a feeling that everything is going to be all uh, right mm. so i have a feeling and you can get that um i have copies for that also you can also go to um spotify and um all those other places to get um a copy of that also my husband and i have a seat have a single out also um our wedding song um that's on spotify um that's named the name is to god knows where Wow. Um, so you can get that also Pandora, Pandora, Spotify, all digital outlets. Um, that okay. song is there. Okay. This is awesome. You know, and, and she hasn't let anything stop her. You know, she was letting stuff stop her, 
but now she's not letting nothing stop it, stop her at all. And this book, it sounds really good in the midst of all. And this is what we gotta, we gotta know what to do while you're going through. What do I do while I'm going through? And this is what she has shared with each and every one of us. I see you, Clarissa uh, Torres and Clarice um, Jordan um, that has joined us. And so many have been on the show. And um, uh, Tara uh, Wilson says, perseverance. Amen. And that's what she heard you saying. And so many have heard so many different things. The old have become new. Oh my goodness, this is such a great dialogue and testimony that you have given unto us and shared. And anyone that desires to be a guest or have um, something to talk about, or you have a business or a book or a plan or something, and you want to be on a godly woman's show, you can contact me. You can inbox Anita C. Spaulding, and I will definitely um, uh, look at what you have. You could send me over your bio. And we're always looking for those that don't that want to share to the masses and classes of people throughout the country. And we have something to share. This is your time. And this is where we need to go. This is our direction. We need to go nowhere but up. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. We need to go up, Amen. up and away. Praise God. But in the things that God has given unto us, I want you to remember that. On Saturday, we're at, I'm asking those that will that join us on Zoom. I will be the speaker for Sister to Sister's fifth annual virtual empowerment gathering. It's just going to be on Zoom. That's the information. Um, Evangelist Melissa Sands is the gathering host. It's this Saturday, May 14th at 10 a.m. Yes, I want to see you in the place because <laughs> I know there is a word in my belly for you. God has given me a word for those that will be watching. Also on May the 19th, I will be the guest speaker at the Holy Convocation of um, in the name of Jesus Church on 307 16th Avenue in Newark, New Jersey, where Bishop Clifton Williams is the senior pastor. So God is doing some great things for us and we need to continue to be glad. On Wednesdays, at, um, uh, at 8.30 p.m. is our virtual Winning Wednesday Bible study with Bishop-elect and or myself. Um, we're a team, Team Spalding, and on um, their Super Sunday service at 1 o'clock p.m., all on Facebook Live. And we want you to be a part, if you're not busy, to be a part of what God is doing in our life also. And those of you that would sow a seed on tonight to a godly woman's view, the cash app is dollar sign W I N N N E R one, two, three. That's three N's. Again, that's dollar sign W I N N N E R one, two, three. So we want you to um, sow a seed um, to this particular ministry. We know that God um, is touching hearts right now, even as I speak. Thank Amen. God for you. I love y'all so much. And I love you and your husband. Y'all is, is all right. Y'all is dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> God be the glory. It's so God sweet. The glory. And this has been so beautiful. We have those that are saying, thank you, woman, women of God. Bless you. Love you, First Lady. Um, Sandra, for vision. Says, Thank you. Oh, she says, I live in Newark. That's great to know. I live in the <laughs> Union. I praise God. So listen, thank you all my VIPs, the Godly Woman's View VIPs. That's the, y'all are very important people that have watched tonight. And I tell you something, I love you guys. I really do. And Amen. there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you. Until Amen. next Tuesday, Thank you've you. been watching A Godly Woman's View. God bless. Thank you.